Uh oh, <laughs> we better be careful with what we say while reporting on a video game that takes place during a pivotal moment in world history, a cornerstone of any middle or high school curriculum, yet still just a bit too controversial for a family website like YouTube. Shh, 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 shh. Listen, listen, we really want to talk about this hot new video game, but tales have been told that if you speak its name, the monetization gods will strike you down without mercy. What is this game that is so controversial you can't even say its name without Google's iron fist pummeling you into oblivion? Of course, it's Call of Duty. Because, of course it is. Peggy 18. He said it. Yeah, it looks like the millions of lives lost over 70 years ago were just the start of the real casualties caused by Adolf Hitler and World War II, because now, all these years later, it's affecting something far more important. The ability of Call of Duty YouTubers to properly monetize their overanalyzation of the latest game from Activision. A right, true right. tragedy. Who would have thought that we would still be feeling the repercussions of a war that happened almost a century ago? Especially when most of these YouTubers live in the very country that single-handedly ended it with no help from anyone. Nope. When, when so many others just ran home with their tails between their legs and cried and ate uh, croissants. I'm just gonna go eat some cheese. I'm gonna sip my tea and eat my baguette. Mm-hmm. Well, it's almost like YouTube just wants to pretend that World War II never happened. Never forget. Okay, obviously this is just another example of YouTube's new overzealous advertising algorithm, and it's probably just picking up keywords like war. Uh, and then it's, of course, making these videos unavailable for any brand or company that clicked the filter that removes the videos that reference war at all, whether it's real or digital. Now, far be it for a multi-billion dollar company to develop an algorithm that knows the difference between actual combat videos and people talking about a new video game, whatever. Not to mention the fact that YouTube themselves will no doubt be running ads for this game all over the website in the coming months. But, nah, this totally makes a lot of sense, right? Maybe the, the game quality is getting so good that it thinks there's footage of, of murder on the battlefield, but it's mm -hmm. actually just a game. Yeah. This is a problem. Uh-huh. Anyway, all these shenanigans started coming to a head when larger YouTubers, the big boys, started sharing some of their monetization statistics earlier this week and included comparisons to videos that had nothing to do with COD World War II. Most notably, a user named Prestige is Key, who made a video recently where he showed some of the screen caps of his videos being demonetized for discussing topics like World War II and Nazi zombies. A real, a real group of people. People were eaten by these Nazi zombies and it's and not cool to talk about it. Nope. Still stinks. Uh, he also posted images on Twitter which showed the vast difference between two of his videos. One, a video called My Milk Expired, had around 30,000 views. And for those views, he made $40. Mm -hmm. The other video was simply called New Dash Movement Mechanic in World War II. That video, by comparison, had three times as many views, but only pulled in a tenner. Yeah. A 10 spot. 10 out of 10? I mean, when I think about the the horrible things that happened in World War II, I just thank my lucky stars and stripes that the Americans had mm -hmm. the ability to dash. Step aside, Step Europeans. Aside. We have the dash ability, and yeah. we're coming to save the world. Yeah. We're level 76. Now, here's where it gets kind of weird, and allow us to bring out our inner Alex Jones for a moment. Uh, we won't yell. I'll put on my tinfoil mariachi tin hat. Yeah. <laughs> that would be cute. My tinfoil sombrero. Yeah. You should put a bunch of tinfoil on this tonight and go out to the bars and just be like, the, ball, the wall's a metaphor! <laughs> How do we know Mexico really exists? <laughs> I don't, I've never seen it. Anyways, so, yes, here we go. Conspiracy theory. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Theoretically, if this isn't just a terrible oversight on the part of YouTube, it could actually do damage to this franchise and its publisher and its developer, the shockwaves of which would travel down to the rest of the industry as they try to avoid potential pitfalls. Now, you kids like hypotheticals, right? Yeah! <laughs> try this one on for size. YouTube's adpocalypse situation causes creators to focus entirely on games that are completely safe and family friendly because otherwise they'd be wasting hours and hours of time producing content that's essentially worthless. When that happens, sales of violent video games will plummet because let's be honest, all of these videos are essentially just marketing for these games anyway. Developers and publishers then follow this trend and start creating games that are safe to talk about and show off and there you go, you have the Disneyfication of not only YouTube, 
but the world at large. Yep. Stay tuned. It's the true World War Three. Yeah, the, the next World War Three started when YouTube put their put their fist down and said, "You know what? No, we won't let you talk about World War Two on our platform. We're Holocaust deniers." Yeah, and the next the next COD game is gonna be Call of Duty Paintball. Yeah. Call of Duty Airsoft. Call of Duty Splatoon. Call of Duty Nerf. Yeah. They'll literally nerf the game. We are all screwed. Yeah. Well, all right, quick. Let's change the subject so that we're not depressing you with the realization that the slow but stable crawl towards a quarantine future where fun is a crime is just right there. Yeah. Polygon is fucking stupid, right, guys? We can all agree on yeah. that. Woo! Yeah, that's fun, right? So let's make fun of stupid Polygon again. Now, this time, it's not just them calling out a game that they've never played for not being progressive enough. It's more like reality, shitting on their Nostradamus-like abilities to predict the future. Case in point, these two headlines from their site regarding the recent release of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> By the way... Swish! <laughs> it, it has been a Switch. Yeah. By the way, all credit goes to Twitter user at StonePaw11 for grabbing these screenshots. Uh, here's Exhibit A. Mario Kart 8 will likely be the worst selling game in franchise history. Here's why. And Exhibit B. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe sets record as fastest selling game in the franchise. Now, okay, okay, shh. In the time-honored tradition of being ethical as fuck, yes. The first <laughs> article is from three years ago and is specifically talking about Mario Kart 8, not the Deluxe Edition for the Switch, but it's still the same game. And even back then, the non-Deluxe Mario Kart 8 thing, it was a commercial success. And it sold just under 9 million copies, making it the highest selling game for the Wii U console. And that's before you start tallying up the sales for the Deluxe Nintendo Switch Edition. So, uh, <laughs> sorry Polygon, I guess you're just fucking wrong. Yeah, stick to what you do best. Yeah. Nitpicking. Mm -hmm. At least here at Tugs, we have the distinct advantage of being able to get things wrong all the time because this show is a fucking joke and it isn't meant to be taken seriously. It's such an easy card to play. We could just say anything like, uh, oh, Half-Life 3 is officially confirmed. Oh, really? Not? What? What? Oh. <laughs> no. But yeah, we do have to admit that's obviously a lie. Not just because that phrase has become a shitty meme over the last decade or so, but because there's literally no way that could happen now. Thanks to the news that the last remaining Half-Life writer has resigned from Valve. I'm done. Turned that Valve off. Yeah. Sorry kids, I guess now's the perfect time to remind you that dreams don't come true and no one cares about you. Whoa, whoa hold on, hold on, Elliot. Actually, wait, uh, that's not true either. Oh. We're being super ethical today. Uh, I'm, and we're very sorry that this episode is now a roller coaster ride of emotions, but someone really does care about you. The Chinese government. Ooh, my favorite. Yeah, and, and we know you're saying to yourselves, but thugs. I thought China was sketchy. Trump said so. Nah, we're buds. Yeah, you're forgetting that delicious chocolate cake that the president of China enjoyed at Mar-a-Lago a few weeks back. Uh, we're, we're pretty much best friends well, now. They bombed Afghanistan together. Yeah, it did. Hey, check this out. It's the biggest fucking bomb on earth. Yeah, of course. This, Ooh. this has nothing to do with the cake that Trump and the Chinese president were eating while we bombed a Middle Eastern country. It has everything to do with Overwatch. So you see, thanks to regulations that China has placed on gaming in general to deter things that might resemble gambling, Blizzard was forced to reveal the odds of getting rare, epic, and legendary items from the loot boxes that you can earn or pay for in Overwatch. The full breakdown is posted on a Chinese Overwatch site, but it lists the odds as follows. You get four items with every box opening. Every 5.5 loot boxes has a chance of including an epic item within them. Legendary items are obviously even harder to come by, only showing up once in every 13.5 boxes that you open. Basically, the odds are not ever in your favor, just like real gambling, and you're going to have to pay a fuck ton of money to the game to get all the good stuff, or no. just do what everyone else does and spend all your food and clothing money on a chance to get something that's completely worthless to 99% of the population. Cool spray, bro. Now, of course we can already hear the sounds of Blizzard fanboys but, around but, but, the but, world but, 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 crying at their screens and saying, but Blizzard, Blizzard would never do anything bad to me. I love them. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was confusing you you for Shibby, who is <laughs> saying that from slightly off camera. He, he's he's crying, so we have to hurry up and get him in here. But Blizzard's my friend. The only thing that will stop me from crying is being on camera. Yeah, so what do you have for us? Okay, come on, Shibby. Shibby. Tell us the stuff. Let me tell you about Heroes of the Storm. Oh, <laughs> oh! Hey, why do you have shit all over your shirt? Yeah, you pooped your shirt. Yeah, did you wipe your shirt with your ass? It's a little messy. <laughs> what do you think, Kaz? We good? Leave it. I'm soft. Just step the one fuck step did you just? I don't know. I just love chocolate. I got a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I put a Hershey bar in my pocket and went outside. <laughs> Too hot for chocolate. Too hot for chocolate. Those primer guys are crazy. All right. Okay. Tugs boys and Tugs girls, this week I'm mad 
about net neutrality, what? healthcare bills, early access games, and greedy developers literally stealing from your wallets with promises of grandeur. Which one of those things is more important than the other, and it's the gaming one. That's the right. <laughs> Do you real PC gamers know when Daisy was just an Arma 2 mod? No, but I know that real Chevy fans eat ass. That's right. I remember. <laughs> I remember when that mod was literal... <laughs> was literal liquid crack before developer greed and hackers took over teleporting players to the Thunderdome in the Northeast airfield. I remember when I loved AZ mod so much that I was chosen by my peers here at Machinima to interview my god, my deity, at the time, Dean Rocket Hall. On livestream, the brains, the mastermind behind it all, is now dead to me. After spearheading the Arma 2 mod of the game, taking some time off, comes back to work at the leading standalone Daisy producer guy. It's huge! The also announcement. Thunderdome <laughs> earlier, which I think is cute. Is that what you called your uh, room in college? Hell yeah. Hey, hey, babe. We'll take this back to the Thunderdome. We'll take this back to the Thunderdome. <laughs> Anyways, he was chosen as the lead on the standalone version of DayZ. It's a huge announcement and players are excited beyond belief. That's what happened. About a year into it. With promises <laughs> of fiction. What is this sentence structure? <laughs> with the promises of fixing the anti-cheat issues, graphical improvements, and zombie tracking, etc, etc. Dean leaves Bohemia to start his own studio to work on a new game. Some kind of tactical shooter, right? Right? Nope. A stupid fucking space game. Fucking sweet. The reason I bought this game, not the team behind him, but literally buying the game because I believe in this guy and his work, he just pieces out and then leaves the game like a G Fuel boosted code came Vegas hooker. What? One of the best PC gaming experiences that I've ever had, killed off by hackers. And then with proper support, a new Phoenix rises with new promises and proper backing. It's a perfect storm. This game is going to be fucking incredible. Nope, nope, a lie. No Man's Sky's level of shibby criminal. Woohoo! Selling over <laughs> 3 million copies, the DayZ of Daisy, and still no real progress. Putting this game out to the masses on Steam with no real intentions of making serious progress and getting out of early access is just unethical of no promises of getting out of early, or the early access. Wow. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? I have about? no idea what the fuck you've been talking about for the past five minutes. It's unethical and a scam. Gamers should be refunded at this point and punishment from Steam should occur to the developer. I can go on. But I'm too Please pissed don't. off to continue. I must rate Daisy Stanilode a goddamn zero at 1,236 the number of days it's been out since early access. Days with a Z. Ah! Zero shibby shirts sold. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was a special one. That was a very special one. Wow. Well, since you can't buy Daisy on Amazon, we just looked up another zombie game for a real review and found this one for the original Dead Island. The review comes from Darlene, who titled their review, Too Violent. <laughs> Darlene here. <laughs> I'm just a stay-at-home mom who likes shooters. <laughs> I bought this game and played it, because I did. And this, this review wasn't written at all, just based on the box art. Darlene here. This game, like many others, is too violent and should not be given to children to play. This game, like many others, desensitizes adults and children to violence, brutality, and gore. Too many games reward and encourage evil thinking that disrespects the life of humans, human-like subjects, and animals. Our society is wiring our children's brains to seek out dangerous situations with the unrealistic feeling of being immortal. Adults and children will be better served reading classics or watching educational TV programs. Why not both? <laughs> She did just look at the box art and then write this review. Oh my god! <laughs> They're marketing this to children! It's, it says, uh, for mature audiences right there on the box. Nah, kids are very mature! Wait, so it's glorifying zombies being immortal? I guess? Yeah, these kids cool. shoot enough zombies in the game, they're gonna start shooting zombies in, in real, real life. life. Okay. Think about it. Yeah, so yeah, uh, in 10 years when you're all wondering where the fuck all the good violent games went, you can look back on this episode of Tugs as a reference and say, Fucking Darlene and YouTube ruined games forever. Damn it, Darlene. And Tugs, they tried to warn us, but we didn't listen. I guess I'll go play Mario Kart 12, which Polygon swears is going to have very poor sales. They promise. Yeah. 
All right, guys, buy our male vitality pills and watch <laughs> our Mario Kart stream. We had a good time. Buy yeah. a shirt, uh, but not the shibby shirt, because yeah. uh, this video talks about a video game based on World War II. So you know we're not getting any of that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Go buy a shirt, etcmerch.com. Watch our other videos. We'll see you next time. Aye, aye, aye. All right.